Fuel is the official podcast of the 434th Air Refueling Wing. Join us for airman connections, leadership insights, mentorship, and happenings mixed with some fun and humor. Please understand that the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of the U.S. Air Force nor the Air Force Reserve, and no endorsement of any person or business is ever intended. Welcome to the Fuel Podcast. This is our first ever, and I'm your host, Command Chief Nathan Parks, and in the room here with me is Tech Sergeant Josh, the Dream Weaver. Uh, he's the one that's making all of this happen. So we are excited for you to be here today. Um, we're going to attempt this, and, and this podcast will evolve over time into whatever you guys want it to be. And so we're going to give you some instructions later on on, on what you can do to kind of help us evolve this into uh, what you guys are wanting. Today on the show, we're going to introduce you to our wing commander and our friend, uh, Colonel Pemberton. We're going to take a look at his personal life and his professional life, and we're going to have a little bit of fun with him. So uh, that that's exciting to me. I always love to see uh, our, our senior leaders where we get to see the personal side of them. So we're going to dig into that a little bit today. Uh, we're also rapidly approaching the May UTA, so we're going to discuss some of the upcoming events and opportunities that that, that has to offer. And uh, as always, uh, we're going to find out about one of my personal favorites is what people are loving. And, and so I'll introduce you to that on, on what we're loving and we'll go through that. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that uh, I want to talk about is I want to cover uh, all the great groups that we have here on base and how you can get involved. Uh, now, if you're like me and I know I am, you're probably thinking, why do I want to go to another lame meeting? Uh, and, and I think that's a pretty valid question. Uh, that's that's the least that I want you to do. I, I do not want to uh, encourage you to go to another lame meeting. And so we're doing everything we can do to make these meetings uh, very important. But the most important part of these meetings is uh, the ones that I'm going to bring up, and there's going to be many more that, that you can be involved with, is this is where we implement change. And a lot of times when I say where we implement change, some of you are tuning out right now because you think, well, you know, I'm not really in a leadership position. I'm not in a position where, where I implement change. You know, I don't, I don't really have a voice on this base. I just kind of come and I do my UTAs and then I leave. I drive my two hours or however long you drive home and, and, and you just do your thing. And you, you, the whole way you think, when I, I wish this was different or I hoped this was different and, and it wasn't. So these groups are, are where the real change happens. Um, and I want to empower you and, and I want to encourage you to, to go to these groups and really dig in and make change. And, and when I say make change, sometimes also people think, well, why is he trying to change Grissom? Grissom is great. I agree with you. It is a phenomenal place. In the short time I've been here, I've been here since about December. In the short time I've been here, I've met nothing but great people doing great things. And we do the mission um, better than anybody else. We set the standard and, and people come here to learn that standard. But we want to continue to make it great. And to continue to be great, we have to continue to evolve. And that's what these are all about. So let's start with the Rising Six. Uh, the Rising Six, it's a great group. It's E1 through E6s. Uh, their focus is on prof professional and personal growth uh, along with ways that you can get involved at the, ba at the base level. So they're going to reach out to different organizations and they're going to have them come in and maybe talk about how to write bullets better or EPRs or, or how to, to apply for a KPL or anything like that. And they're going to do a lot of uh, bring a lot of people in to do mentoring sessions and everything. And I will tell you that this is one of my the meetings that I look forward to going to most. Because these are the workers, these are the people that are out there doing the mission every single time they're in here. And I want to hear what is affecting them. So I go to this meeting and I, and I listen to the suggestions they have. And, and we talk about maybe some of the roadblocks that they're facing and, and uh, thing, other ideas on how to get around those roadblocks or how to get through them. Uh, the next group I want to talk about is the top three. Top three is your E7 through E9s, your chiefs. And uh, this is focused on developing each other and mentoring those around them. And so your top three meeting, they're going to be the ones that a lot of times the rising six will call on uh, to come in and do these speed mentoring or, or to talk about EPRs or to talk about awards boards and what they're looking for. 
they're also going to be the ones that are reaching out, hopefully doing burger burns, hint, hint. Hopefully they, they do stuff like that and they, they attract us, all these groups. If you're running a group, let me tell you right now, the, the easiest way to get people there is free food. So hopefully they are, they're out there doing burger burns and everything and getting you to come in and show you what they're all about. And, and these are the people in your squadron that, that you should be looking up to, that we should be holding to a standard that says, hey, I, I, I need help with my growth or I need help with developing. And these are the people I want to go to. So um, they're going to give us also the why on what we do. And so they're going to break down in each uh, each meeting, each organization, they're gonna, you're gonna, those should be the individuals in the top three that you can go to and say, I, I understand what we're doing, but why are we doing this? So they should be looking into those things. We're, we're hoping to offer a uh, national defense strategy and your squadron uh, organization or class later this year to where you can talk about, hey, how does your squadron and how does what you're doing actually fit into the national defense strategy? So these are these E7, E9, the top three meetings. Um, if you're keeping track at home, I like donuts. So if you really want me to go to those do meetings, then then donuts would be where it's at. Uh, but there's many other groups that are that are on base and many other groups that, that can be on base. Uh, there's a motorcycle club I know on base. There's game night. Master Sergeant O is running a great game night that's getting together. Uh, I watched them uh, play some uh, I, one of the soccer games that was out there and they got destroyed, but it was, I think it was Rocket League, but it was good. It was fun and they were having fun and, and I had fun making fun of them. So uh, that, that was a good time. And But there's plenty of other groups. I'd like to challenge all the officers that are out there that I, I don't really know of any officer organizations that are, that are on this base. So uh, start one up. The key spouse program, the, the key spouse program we have on here, if you're a spouse and you're listening to this, that is a great organization to be a part of. You're gonna be in the know uh, for things that are going on in Grissom, as well as you're gonna get plenty of opportunities to reach out to airmen and to interact in their lives and make a huge impact. And we have the best in Africa here is the key spouse program and, and the largest that most of us have ever seen in the Air Force for a key spouse program. So thank you for the key spouses. but. I also want to challenge that if there's a group that maybe you're like, none of those groups sound like me. Well, what does sound like you? And why not you to start that group? And so be thinking about that and be thinking of the organizations that you want, the organizations that you want to be a part of and what, what, it, what interests you and let's go after those groups. So why not you? Next, I'm going to bring on a, a, a great friend of ours, um, he's been here before. He was he was over in the ops squadrons before, and he was flying here. And he left about ten years ago. Uh, went and did tours at McDill. He went did did uh, uh, a stint over at Andrews, and then most recently at McGuire. And now he's here. He's our commander. He's our friend, Colonel Tom Pemberton. Colonel Pemberton, thank you so much for joining us. I know that you've got a, a busy schedule. I've seen your schedule, and it, it is busy, and, it, <laughs> and you're doing a lot of things. But uh, thanks for joining us. Today. Thanks, Chief. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. So uh, you know, everybody had an opportunity to see your bio, and and we all got to go to the Assumption of Command. Those a lot of us got to go to that, and we saw things on your military side. But how about you tell us a little about about you as as a family man? What besides, does your family look like? Besides, I'm old. Yes. Yeah. 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 Besides that. Besides <laughs> what we could see, sir. Like what? What do you? What are your family and? Well, you saw some of my family at the Assumption of Command ceremony, and I was very proud of my daughter getting up and singing. Oh She's yeah. A beautiful. It was amazing. Voice. I was just oh man, it gave me chills when I was listening to her. Uh, but I think that's. Uh, yeah, I have uh, three kids. Uh, my daughter is uh, married. She lives down in Indianapolis and expecting our first grandbaby. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, my middle son and his wife live out in Pullman, Washington, and uh, he is. Uh, they're expecting our second grandchild in the June-July time frame. And then my youngest is uh, living over in Muncie, Indiana, and uh, is trying to figure out his place in life, too. So uh, yeah. great, great family. We're very blessed. What type of granddad are you going to be? Or, or do you have a name already? Uh, like a, no, not yet. No. That's that next chapter that we're trying to figure yeah. out, right? That's yeah, the fun yeah. part. That's, uh, uh, that's where we figure out where, uh, uh, where our part is in yeah. this, uh, being grandparents. The kids, uh, the kids always get a big say in that, but do you have a say on what you'd want to be called? Oh, man. I don't no, You know what? I haven't even thought about that yet. Yeah. I know my wife and I have said, you know, are we going to be grandma, grandpa? Are we going to paps? You know, what, what are you mm -hmm. going to call? I don't know. Uh, I figured either my kids will make that name or my grandkids will make that name when they when they yeah. when they start babbling a little bit. So, 
So you just moved back here. You, you got your little farmhouse. What are your hobbies? Like, where, where do you spend your time? Right, right now, fixing up my house. Because yes. uh, that, uh, that's our first house that we've owned in a while here. So it's, it's nice being a homeowner again. Uh, but it's nice being a homeowner again because now you have that uh, honey-do list of things that you have to get done around the house. So uh, that's been taking a lot of time. And, that, and that's fun to me. I like working on small projects like mm-hmm. that around the house. Uh, and just making a home, I guess, is what's really nice about it. And, yeah, we're, it's, as you mentioned, we're a little farmhouse out in the country. Uh, got a few acres there, so you can do the little walkabout. You can walk around the property, just uh, kind of let blow off some steam a little bit and uh, just enjoy the, enjoy the land. Yeah, that's uh, what you you bought a new home too, right? It's it was new. a it's an 1880 farmhouse yeah, that yeah, was so remodeled. Recently built. Yeah, recently, yeah, 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 recently built, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a that's a good one. So, uh, so your your daughter sang this beautiful rendition of, of the American or the mm. national anthem, and and man, it was it was awesome, like you said. And thank you. And I so, just, and I think your son's in a band, right? Yep. And, it's, and so. What role does music play for you in your life? Oh, quite a bit. I mean, my wife and I both were uh, grew up in music. I mean, she sang in the choir. I sang in the choir when I was in college. Um, it it has played a pivotal role uh, with us. And I, as you know, I listen to it in my office all the time. You know, whether it's country western, whether it's bluegrass, whether it's symphony, whether it's uh, you know a Christian contemporary. I, I just like all kinds of music. It's part of me. Yeah. Uh, so now let's get into a little bit of work related. Okay. Um, so you just got here. You've been uh, you you did the assumption of command, but you've been here for about a month now in the right. seat. So you've got it all figured out, I'm sure. And oh you've yeah. Got the, yeah. Uh, you've oh, got every yeah. aspect figured out. So so kind of talk about that. I think sometimes there's a a little bit of an illusion of uh, when a senior leader PCS that I mean, you still get nervous when you walk in. Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. my goodness, yes. I don't think there's a senior leader that doesn't get nervous. Yes, yeah, stressful um, move, or was it? It is stre- It was stressful a little bit, um, but I think that the thing that set it up for success was coming back to Indiana and being close to our family, because mm-hmm. uh, we haven't been able to uh, spend time. You know, like just yesterday, we went down to with uh, my daughter and had uh, had dinner with them at their house, and we haven't been able to do that uh, in a while since being living out in the on the East Coast and them being here in the Midwest. So. That has been a, a a true blessing we've been able to enjoy. Yeah, that's uh, you know, it it uh, you do some moves that maybe you don't want to do to end up at the backside of your career or the the, t- the pinnacle of your career where you are. Uh, you get to make the moves that you want to, and it kind of sounds like that that makes it all worth it. At that, it does, and and stepping into a wing that uh, that I kind of grew up in, and has been um, a model reserve wing for the command for years. Uh, and stepping at the helm, I'm, I mean, I, my wife and I look at each other like, wow, can you believe we got to this to yeah. this point, right? Uh, and we're excited. Uh, the first couple weeks have been like old home weeks, seeing a lot of people that I hadn't seen in years. Uh, but uh, when you see them, you know you rekindle those friendships and the relationships, and you know the fantastic professionals that we have in this wing. Just amazing. Yeah, that's been fun watching you. Uh, sometimes it takes them... You know, if uh, we see them out and about out, outside and they remove their mask, then you're like, oh, that's, I didn't, where'd you go? You it, know, yeah, some of the them mask are, is hidden. It hidden does, a lot of it hides your face, right? Yeah, 11 and years worth of aging. It's, you can it's always tell when mask. somebody's mu- smiling, you that's can see a, it in their yeah. eyes, but uh, yeah, you have to, a uh, few people, I'm like, I recognize you as soon as they take their mask off. I'm like, I haven't seen you in a while. You yeah. look great. So uh, let, let's talk a little bit about leadership here. Uh, what would you say your leadership philosophy is? Uh, servant leader. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna ask you to do anything that I wouldn't be willing to do myself. Uh, and I will step forward and and I want to ensure that I give all the tools necessary for you to do your job for our airmen to do their job. Um, and I will support support them in that. Uh, but again, servant leadership is my is my big philosophy. So with that servant leadership, uh, you know, the serve part of it is the big emphasis, right? And so, um, how do you go about continuing to sharpen those skills? To, to be a servant leader, what what do you look? Are you podcast? You book guy? Are you uh, a book guy? Uh, reading quite a bit, yes, uh, and just talking, talking to different people. I like to get about. I call it management management by walking around. Mm-hmm. I like to get out and about and meet different people. Just find out what makes them tick. But uh, I want them to appreciate that I value them and I value their opinion in, uh, because. 
I, as I've told people before, I don't have all the, the corner on the good ideas market. Uh, we need to reach out to all of our airmen, and each one of our airmen has a different perspective that is what's what makes us strong, right? That diversity is really our strength. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, speaking of that is, what would you say to these airmen right now that, that maybe have a different perspective of, of how we're seeing things, but maybe even the airmen that is hurting. They see the current events that are going on right now, and they're hurt and they're disturbed by them. What do you say to them? I'd say my heart hurts too. Uh, I, I hurt seeing, seeing what we're going through as a nation. Uh, see, I, it, it's, I struggle with it a lot, um, but I would say some of the discussions that we're getting ready to have, I think in this next UTA, uh, I think they're healthy discussions, but I think we need to come from the, the baseline that we are all airmen. We yeah. are all wearing the same uniform, and we have the, took the same oath, and we have the same goals for that, and use that as the starting point for that conversation that we need to have happen, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'll support anybody's right to protest. That's what we fight for is those rights of, for our folks, and we should be taking advantage of those rights. I just don't like to see it when it breaks down into violence and, and rioting and things like that because that, that's not what we're about as a nation. I, I just that, that hurts me when I see that. I just see people's businesses and their livelihoods destroyed, and I, I don't think that's what we should be about. Yeah. So what you talked about there and just knowing that we're all airmen, mm -hmm. but sometimes people look around and they go, yeah, I'm an airman, but I don't have anything in common with you. Look a lot different than you. I'm, yeah. I'm younger. What, I'm older. What do you say to those airmen that, that feel like maybe they don't belong here at Grissom or maybe they don't fit in here at Grissom? I would urge them to at least sit down with somebody that maybe doesn't look like them and go, hey, tell me about yourself. Get to know them a little bit. Because I think they, what they might find out is they have more in common than what they realize. Just because they don't look the same talk the same or have the same accent or wear the same clothes or whatever, there's a lot of similarities. And that first similarity is we are warriors, right? We mm -hmm. swore an oath to protect and defend. Use that as the starting point. Use that as the commonality, because, but I think you're going to find you have more in common than what you realize. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Finding those commonalities, yep. man. It's, uh, I, I once played a, I was at a conference and they gave us they split us up and never met any of these people before. And they split us up in groups of three and it was called common thread. So you had to find the most obscure common thread in, and it was like five minutes. Right. And so you knew nothing about these people and it was amazing how much you had in common with people that were from all different walks of life, different. I was the only one in my group that didn't have a doctorate. And I was like, I have three CCAFs, which I kind of consider to be a master's, right. but uh, I, don't know, I don't think that's how that works. But, uh, but that common thread, really makes a big difference, especially when people are hurting and, and trying to fit in. So, so hey, if nothing else, I watched the Pace video this morning. It was showing some of the uh, young BMT kids without any hair. Hey, I can, I can relate <laughs> yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah. You're related to at this. Least I can, at least I can look, look yeah. like them a little bit. Yeah, you're right on track there, sir. So uh, what do you have? You come into this, this and every wing has got to be different. It is. And so yeah. you come to Grissom and... and what are you expecting of us as 434th members? What are your expectations of us? Continue to do what you're doing to support the mission. Um, but I would expect you to, I mean, I've already said manage, managing expectations is what I like to do with people mm -hmm. so that you know what to expect from me and I should be able to know what to expect from you, right? Um, I want our core values are, are uh, very strong with me integrity above all else if we don't have integrity the other two uh, core values don't mean a thing right yeah. excellence and service before self don't mean a thing if you don't have integrity so um, if we, we all make mistakes if we make a mistake own up to it and move on I've made more mistakes than I, I would care to even think about and dwell upon but uh, if we make a mistake own up to it and move on because we are all human and we do make mistakes um, especially when we're trying to be innovative uh, and think outside the box a little bit. Are we going to fail? Probably. I would expect to, but there are times when we won't fail. But when we do, just own up to it. That, it that's not a big one. Um, 
It, you're, and you're going to expect me to, I'm going to abide by the regulations and the AFI guidance that's out there. I'm going to do my best, like I said, to fight for, fight for you for, to get the tools you need to do your job. I'm going to treat everyone with respect uh, and be fair and consistent with everybody. So I think that's what you can expect from me. I already told some of the folks that reached out to my previous wing to say, hey, what, what's this guy like? I, I would hope that they would have said the same thing. Yeah, you're, he's going to be fair and consistent, and uh, uh, he's going to support you. Yeah. I, I definitely reached out uh, like any any good chief would do. It's, uh, I like to call it the shadow government. Government. I reached out to the chief network. And, I would uh, expect and, nothing and, less. And, and talk to them. So uh, the fair was was those words that they used, and, and a lot of fun too. And, and so hopefully the wing gets to see you that. And so, sir, if it's okay with you, I'd like to take those expectations and post them on my SharePoint page Please. to where they're yes. available to everyone. Yep. And we'll tell you how to get there. And and then. Uh, and speaking of fun, I'd like to wrap this up with a little bit of this or that. Okay. And so I'm going to give you two choices, sir. You give us uh, which one you would choose in this or that. So first is Chevy or Ford? Ford. Okay. Here in this town, I think I, I, I have to also put in there uh, Dodge or everything else. Yes, so exactly. Yeah, yep. Got to be careful on that one. Country or rock? Uh, it depends on the mood. I'd say... Um, it's the majority of the time. Country. Yeah, I hear you a lot. I hear you listen to a lot of bluegrass. And, I do. And uh, you don't usually listen to country music. I hear you listening to western. It's like old well, school. Well, they got both yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. country I don't hear and you western. Listening to like some Florida Georgia Line or <laughs> Latham Warwick. It's it's more so Coke or Pepsi. Uh, Pepsi. Okay. Sweet or unsweet tea? Unsweet. Unsweet. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Which don't like one? all that sugar. Ugh. Well, that may uh, Chick Fil A or Popeyes. Chick-fil-A. Okay. What's your go-to there at Chick-fil-A? Cobb salad. Love it. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Gotta be, it's got to be somewhat healthy, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, but it's still well, got chicken in it. I mean, it, that's so. one philosophy. Mine is, if I'm going to go, go big. <laughs> so, uh, Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox. Okay, so you answered Xbox pretty quick. What games you play on Xbox? Who said I played games on well, Xbox? Well, you answered Xbox. Uh, my kids got me an Xbox here a couple years ago, and uh, so they, and they got me some games to go with it. But it's uh, Call of Duty, I think that he they got, and then uh, some uh, Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Yeah, it's the one that I I played enough to get my backside kicked, and I go, I'm not any good at this, and then I put it away for a few months. <laughs> All right, uh, flight suit or OCPs? Uh, both. Yeah, I, I'll I'll wear OCPs or flight suit. Um, so a two-piece flight suit, then? I guess that's a compromise. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a compromise, yeah, but uh, I want to make sure that um, I'm wearing the uniforms at all the folks that uh, I work work for. Yeah. Sweet or savory? Savory. Mm. Okay. So you're more of a, a steak than a dessert individual. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. You just got a smoker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Traeger. Yeah. Lead Love from the it. front, sir. Lead Love from it. the front. Mm. Briskets all around. Uh, and then here's the final question, sir. And this one is on the minds of the people, and and we may lose some followers out here depending on how you answer this question. Uh-oh, pressure's on now. Does pineapple belong on pizza? So pineapple or no? So I'm a pineapple does belong on pizza okay. kind of guy. Okay, all right. Because I like the ham and pineapple pizza. All right. I will, I will say that. Yeah. Well, you, you heard it here. You heard it here, and I, and I have to agree with him. So mm. we are a pineapple leadership team. Now you're making me hungry. Yeah. It's getting close it is, to lunch. We are getting close to that. Sir, I want to leave you the opportunity to hear uh, anything else uh, before we kind of wrap it up with. Oh, Chief, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, welcoming me back into the wing. I appreciate all the all the great uh, conversations that I've had with all the folks as, as I'm starting to get my feet underneath me here. Um, I, When I came back here, anytime you step into a leadership role that you haven't been in a while, you just kind of want to sit back and watch and see how things work and mm-hmm. see where the dynamics are. Um, and then eventually I'll start going, okay, maybe we need to look at this area, that area. But um, I'm just trying to be a sponge. Uh, I, I know the mission already, pretty good at that. Yeah. But uh, I, I want to learn more about all the people that work in the different uh, offices and the different organizations in this space because it, it takes everybody pulling in one direction to make this, uh, to make this wing run. Uh, we all have got to be chipping in. Those airplanes out there won't turn a wheel unless everybody's working together, right? Yeah. It's more than just ops and maintenance. It is everybody that on this base that uh, makes it run day in, day out. 
Yeah, without our airmen, we're no different than the museum that's right down the street. That's very true. Yeah, very so, true. Uh, I'm gonna. This last piece here is uh, a little section I call like to call "What are you loving right now?" And so, one of the things that I like to end a meeting, if you've ever been in a meeting with me, or or and it's my meeting, is I like to end with going around the room and seeing what you're loving. So it can be anything from, "Hey, this new artist just dropped this music, and, and I'm I'm loving this." It could be, "I just got a new truck. I just got these new shoes." All of us, you know, get that new pair, favorite pair of of shoes or something, or whatever it may be, it could be time spent or a vacation coming up or a vacation you just had. So, sir, what are you loving right now? I'm loving being back in Indiana. I'm loving being back close to my family, uh, my kids, so that we can spend some time with them just in the mundane, ordinary things. Mm -hmm. I'm loving having a new house, uh, loving that fact. And I'm loving getting to know, again, the people of the 434th. Just uh, an amazing wing and just seeing the number of people that I think I mentioned to you that uh, number of folks that have retired militarily but have come back mm -hmm. in a civilian capacity and continue to serve in that capacity, just amazing to me. But it's uh, it's been very heartwarming seeing that. That's well, what I'm loving. Well, sir, we really appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Thanks, and Jason. again, taking time out of your schedule. And I know you, uh, I've seen the passion that you have for airmen already and uh, seeing the passion that you have for your family, which also translates over. So uh, thank you for being that that servant leader and thank you for being someone that uh, is the same outside of here as you are inside of these doors. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate it. I'm humbled by that. Uh, oh. I just I just want to don't take for granted every anything that we have been given and this especially this responsibility for the wing. So thank you for that, Chief. All right. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. you so that was our new wing commander, Colonel Pemberton, and hopefully you learned some things about him, whether personally or professionally, and, and some expectations. And again, you can find all that stuff on my my SharePoint page, and I'll put I'll make a little tab that says podcast uh, information. So, so it comes to me, and now it's my turn to talk about what am I loving? And Colonel Pemberton kind of stole mine. Is, is I'm loving being here. And I'm loving this, the challenge that is being the command chief. And I will tell you that not every day am I loving because it has been challenging and it's been an adjustment uh, for me. But one of the things that I found as I get out and about is people are like, well, what does the command chief do? And I think that's a great question. And, and one is hopefully I'm out and about. Uh, I want to be a visible leader where you're at. I don't want you to have to come to this building to find me. I want you to see me around base and, and see me interacting with you and being at the meetings that you're at and, and being at the gym that you go to and out on the track where you run and uh, at the DFAC where you eat and, and everywhere where you are, where you're turning wrenches, you're making ID cards, you're sticking people in the arm or whatever it is you're doing on that boom or whatever it is that I'm there. And so uh, that's, that's one of the best parts of my job. And if you took away, it's not one of, it is the best. If you took away the people, uh, I'd quit. Uh, no, no, no uh, problem saying that I would I would quit if I didn't have the people. So, but my job here is to kind of fulfill and, and to to keep the commander advised on the morale and the quality of life for for you, the airmen here uh, at Grissom. I work for you guys. I, I solely my sole purpose is to make sure that you're taken care of and that morale and quality of life is any kind of initiative that we have or anything that you can think of that you want to, that, that we chase down those ideas and we look at what is viable and what's not viable for us here at Grissom and how do we get to that. Things like pay issues, uh, chase down a lot of AGR pay stuff right now, but uh, travel vouchers and stuff, just how do we get you paid quicker and more efficiently and how do we make things uh, simpler for you? Roadblocks, and I, I, I go after a lot of roadblocks. When you think that you've hit it and you've said, you know, we've tried everything here in our power, then I try to reach out to our network and outside of the bases and other bases and see if there's maybe a way that somebody else has been able to get around it or get over this roadblock. I look for opportunities for you and, and for the members of Grissom, opportunities uh, not just to, to professionally and personally grow, but uh, also to uh, you know, for your job or maybe you, you, your wife or your, your husband is going somewhere else, then uh, we'll look for opportunities there and, and make our connections with the reserve units around the United States and, and make sure that you're still able to serve. And so look for any kind of opportunities in leadership and in anything else. Um, look for the future missions. So where do we have capacity? What are we looking for? What does Grissom look like in the future? What can we add? Um, what, what, do we, what can we take on without putting too much strain on this wing? 
And so uh, I also look at the personal development and I take the personal development very serious. I'm a firm believer that we're just out here making better um, husbands, wives, daughters, sons, um, brothers, you know, sisters, just you name it, you know, church members, HOA members, just whatever community you're a part of, we wanna make you better at that. Uh, and you just happen to be an airman. Because when we have better people, we'll have better airmen. And so each of us just working to get to our goals and, and helping you get to your goals that you want outside of here, uh, I think helps us grow professionally inside of here. But what I want you to remember is my primary job is representing you. I work for you. So if there's something you want me representing you or you want for me to represent for you, let me know. When you see me walking around, contact me, email me, call me, schedule an appointment, do something, let, let me get out there and let me hear it. Work through your chain first if it's a problem such as, hey, you know, my, my boss told me that, that I can't promote because I'm not you know, meeting these gate. I'm not gonna step in and, and get you promoted. That's, that's, a, that's not what I do here. Uh, but I will help you if you're looking for other development issues or, or de development opportunities or something like that. So the last little bit here is what's gonna happen here in the May UTA. So we're looking at the May UTA. One of the things is the extremism stand down is gonna happen. So we're gonna do some, we, we think that we've put together a quality program and, and some short videos and stuff like that that will keep you interested. But I also want you to start thinking right now, what is your perspective on per extremism? Uh, what are you looking at when, when you hear all this talk and you hear extremism? What does that definition mean to you? And, and come with those discussions. We want all these discussions to be healthy. We want them to be respectful. But we want to learn perspectives and we want to see other people's perspectives. So uh, that's going to be happening. The Rising Six meeting will be happening. The top three meeting will be happening. I'll be sending out emails on, on time and location of those. Uh, Rising Six last week, last uh, UTA was at noon at the DFAC. Uh, and the top three meeting was at seven o'clock at the DFAC expect on Sunday. So expect those to... Uh, be the same unless you see an email that, that comes out and I, I'll still put an email out just in case. Uh, so get involved like we talked about with those earlier. The step two packages are due uh, this, this at the close of business of this UTA. So if you are uh, getting one of your members, trying to get one of your members stepped, you should have already known that a long time ago. Uh, but you should be putting the final touches on the 1206s there due to the wing uh, at the close of business so that we can uh, board those and see who we're putting forward and, and how we can shore up those packages to make them look great and make sure that that uh, our airmen are really shining through and, and what they're doing is shining through. Chief CPRs are due at the end of May, so we're getting those together. Senior Master and EPRs are due in July. Uh, here in May also is at the end of the UTA, there's um, uh, the Flight Commander Flight Chief course. If you're going to be a part of that, that email's already been sent out. In October, 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 mark your calendars. October, we are going to do a family day. So that is gonna be a different UTA and there's gonna be a lot of fun. So start telling your families now that they are invited to come out for the October UTA. And so uh, I just wanna thank you for listening and know that uh, we were gonna answer your questions on this podcast. So you can either email me directly, uh, nathan.parks.1, or you can uh, email Josh Weaver up, up in the PA shop. Uh, and if you want that to be anonymous, you could also, there's, you can ask questions on the share, on my SharePoint, uh, or you can just email me with your question and then just put at the end of it asking for a friend and we'll consider that to be anonymous. So no, no retributions on, on questions or anything like that, but thanks again. And man, drive safe. And we can't, we look forward to seeing you at the May UTA.